<laughs> we'll turn it over to the PWAP chair to open the uh, PWAP portion of the meeting. Um, good evening. Welcome to the uh, joint meeting of the Public Works Advisory Board and Recreation and Parks Commission. This is July 17th, and um, all members of the Public Works Advisory Board, except John Irwin, are present, so we do have a quorum. Take it away, Rick and Park. Chair. Chair? Chair, yeah. We'll do the same. Just open up that. Chair. Welcome everybody to the meeting. Good. Good. Hi. Hi. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm Kevin Carroll. This is the Rec and Parks Commission. We have a quorum of three, and we're starting our meeting on a tour of Wall Bay Parks. Thank you. Hi, it's official now. Thanks. So we're going to start at our first site, which just happens to be right next to our building at 955 Shasta, directly behind me, which is the future home of the city's uh, bocce ball and uh, greenhouse site. So let's walk over there. This site here, um, next to 955 Shasta, uh, at the corner of Shasta, Kennedy, and uh, Dunes, is the future home of the uh, bocce ball, which is sponsored by Morro Bay Active Adults and um, Morro Bay Beautiful. In Bloom. In Bloom. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Morro Bay in Bloom is helping to fund the greenhouse uh, that will also go on this site. So there will be two courts here, um, kind of diagonal. On the diagonal to the uh, uh, lot and then a greenhouse uh, down in the southwest corner of the lot. About a 10 by 15 size uh, a greenhouse that um, Morro Bay and Bloom will be used for propagating plant material uh, that they used on their adopted sites um, around town. Uh, Herb Edwards here over to my left is the uh, assistant engineer has been doing the lion's share, all of the design work on this site. So if anybody has any specific questions, uh, please feel free to ask her any questions that you might have. Um, and I'd like to also include uh, Kirk Carmichael. He is our recreation director. He has been the one spearheading uh, this project. So um, I have a, a rendering that was posted. I believe that most of the PWAB have seen uh, just a simple rendering of the layout of the bocce ball, bocce ball, and the greenhouse. Um, it's going to be ADA accessible, paver pathways, and uh, um, the boat. And we're going to have curb, concrete curb, as the perimeter with a board, essentially a uh, uh, the bumper board. Thank you, which is uh, within. Uh, the bocce ball playing surface. Any sure. specific questions? Fine. Will Morro Bay and Bloom be doing the uh, landscaping in between the courts and sidewalks? Or will there be any landscaping? There's certainly area available for it. Uh, as to who, that hasn't been determined, I don't believe. We're but working with Morro Bay and Bloom to, to work out some kind of a, a, a maintenance agreement. To where they can maintain plant life and hardscape. Uh, that's and then as well as with the Morro Bay Seniors Incorporated, we'll be working with them to uh, to help maintain the courts as well as provide uh, bocce balls for long. Yes. Thanks. 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 Um, Sorry. Please. <laughs> Do you have any approximate date of when this will get started? That's just what I was oh, thinking. I'm so sorry. And um, we recently. Uh, have, I'm not certain of the dates. Uh, maybe Rob can answer that. So this will go out to bid uh, within the next couple of weeks. We'll let it uh, percolate in the contracting community, probably give them a month to bid on it. Uh, we'll go through the contracting portion of that work and 
probably won't take more than a month to actually uh, construct this. So I would say sometime this fall we'll have something here that will be available for use. Um, one other um, idea that uh, regarding the greenhouse, I guess we're applying for a grant or the Morro Bay in Bloom is, so the greenhouse may be at a subsequent date depending upon when that grant monies become available. Does the city um, also have a any kind of yard, greenhouse in their yard that they might use? Would this be supplemental to that, or is, is this the only greenhouse for... This This would be um, uh, Morro Bay and Bloom's greenhouse. Their uh, greenhouse. Their greenhouse. For, wondering. We don't own a greenhouse. We typically buy, Just buy. buy plant material that we're using for various landscaping or um, uh, uh, take cuttings, um, replant uh, plants that into a more, more suitable site is how we generally propagate. Well, if there's no further questions, we're going to move on to City Park. Um, we can take the trolley or we can walk over there. I'll leave it uh, uh, to you. Those that want to walk. Trolley? Yeah, we can walk. You can take it Random. All your guys. Welcome to City Park and the home of the uh, main Morro Bay uh, transit stop. And turn it over to Jean Burlingame. who's going to talk about our transit hub study. So last year we received a grant from the Council of Governments to do a study of our of what we're calling our uh, transit hub. We have not just our local transit services, the year-round bus, along with the trolleys uh, that are seasonal, but we also have the regional transit system who uh, provides connection to outside of Morro Bay. And we also have the school district, I think they're... Now we're a little too far out to walk to our next stop. <laughs> Morro Bay Foundation yeah. sells the... Uh, sells it. Yeah. And then we split the revenue with them. We have a cost sharing agreement. You can have a lot of signs up here. Well, well, you don't want so many that it takes away from what's there. everybody to the home of the city's future water reclamation facility um, plant site. Uh, the city will be purchasing about 27 acres. I'm trying not to do what Bob told me not to do. I talk away from the, uh, the mic. Uh, uh, behind me to the north, uh, over this direction here, about a... I'm going to turn around a little bit so I can see. Hello. A little bit beyond that uh, little rise that goes up to the um, northeast area will be the actual plant site. The city is purchasing about 27 acres. About between 10 and 15 will be used for the um, active uh, plant site itself, and the rest will be preserved as um, some ag buffer area and a site for some future solar to offset uh, electrical use at the plant site. The city will need to construct an access way uh, up this dirt road we just walked up, so there will be 
um, a road and utilities um, brought up to the site. Um, on the site, there will be a operations building, a maintenance building, and then the treatment plant infrastructure, which will consist of a membrane bioreactor, um, advanced oxidation facilities, and uh, reverse osmosis that will treat the water to a level that can be injected into the ground um, in the Moro Aquifer, which is about three miles to the northwest of us here. Um, so pipelines will come from the ex near the existing plant site, um, come up the bike path uh, adjacent to the power plant and Eugene, get onto Quintana Road, Quintana Road to South Bay Boulevard, which is directly behind us, up South Bay to the plant site. So we'll have likely four pipelines, two horse mains, uh, which will be uh, used typically alternating unless it's during high storm flows and we need to use both those uh, force mains. We'll have one brine slash wet weather discharge line that will bring the um, effluent out to the back out to the ocean and then a a uh, indirect potable uh, advanced treated purified water line that will carry that water back to the injection wells. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the project is actually in one form or another. Um, I've been involved with it for the last 12 years here in the city of Morro Bay. Um, and uh, last Thursday night, uh, we received our coastal development permit from the California Coastal Permit Commission, uh, allowing us to uh, begin construction of the facilities we need a few other ancillary permits now that we have a coastal permit. So, as you can see, there is a drainage over here to the um, northeast area here. Um, we'll need the core to make a determination on that. We don't plan on getting into it, but uh, they have the right to make a determination. And then we'll need a permit to cross Morrow Creek with a new pipe bridge. Um, at about where the, all the other existing bridges are. So there's the freeway crosses there, Main Street crosses there, the bike path crosses there. We'll be building a new pipe bridge in between uh, the bike path and the freeway. Any questions you might have on it? So, so the existing plant is really an advanced primary plant. It uh, met the permit requirements when it was constructed. It no longer meets permit, current uh, secondary discharge requirements. We're operating under what is known as a 301H waiver um, issued by the EPA that allows us to discharge um, less than um, secondarily treated water to the ocean. Uh, that existing plant is a uh, what is known as a trickling filter plant, where it's a fixed film bioreactor, where water is sprayed out over uh, rocks. It's biological growth that takes place on those rocks and kind of digests the organic materials in the wastewater. It also has uh, clarifiers, which are settling tanks that allow the, uh, the floatables to float, the solids to sink. Uh, and then the water comes out kind of in the middle of that. And then it goes through a chlorine contact chamber, which chlorinates the water. And then before it gets discharged to the ocean, we have to take the chlorine back out of it um, to discharge that water to the ocean. This plant will be a different technology. Um, we'll be using membrane bioreactors, a big aeration basin, where um, uh, air will be pumped into the basin. Um, and Water will be extracted through fine core membranes to go on to further treatment. So that further treatment will be, um, and the membrane bioreactor does a lot of, it has a, a, a settling process in there and a biological treatment process in uh, the contained tank. Uh, 
the advanced processes include um, advanced oxidation, where we'll really be using chlorine or hydrogen peroxide to um, oxidize some of those um, chemical constituents that cannot be removed through the biological treatment process. Um, UV, ultraviolet, will be used for disinfection, and RO, reverse osmosis, will be used to get the smallest um, particles um, and dissolve solids out of that water before it can be injected into back into the ground where it will be in the ground a minimum of four months before it gets extracted from our existing drinking water wells and we drink that water. Physically, could you drink it and not suffer any health effects? 
probably. The um, state would have to change the regulations to allow that to happen. They're working on doing that right now. So uh, uh, that is, we're monitoring that effort, and uh, but it's likely a few years off before those uh, regulations are developed. But they also put that water back into the ground uh, before they actually no direct connection between uh, their um, advanced treatment uh, system and their water supply. That is about the, the plant water tying that directly into the, the city's water distribution system. Likely it won't be direct, even when the regulations are um, developed, it won't be directly tied in need to have some sort of buffer in there, like a large storage tank, in case there is some sort of upset, there's a spot where you can stop it before it gets into the distribution system. We have until um, March 23. Um, uh, based on our time schedule order through the regional board to have uh, this plant up in operation. We believe that um, given our current schedule, we'll be about a year ahead of that. And just as another reminder for everybody, uh, the rates that are funding all of this go into effect as of this month, and you'll see them on your August, uh, uh, the bill that will come to you in the first part of August. So there will be a significant increase in that bill. Just remember the folks at our public counter that accept those bills, uh, they're the messengers. And uh, uh, don't, don't kill the messenger. Don't kill the messengers. Be kind to the folks that are, there's other folks myself, yeah, city manager, <laughs> uh, that are the ones to come to with questions, complaints. Uh, uh, but um, uh, uh, we're, we're trying to treat everybody with respect. So Rob, it's, you, in addition to the $41 surcharge, you have that the last, the last raise from that five year yes, increase, correct. right? So it's gonna be more than $41. It'll be, be more, it'll be somewhere I think it's around 60 something dollars is for the average water so, user. Yeah. It's hard to say what it, what your your mileage may vary basically. Mm -hmm. And um, commercial users will be much more significant than that. You can't make light of that. That's yeah, uh, us, you know, hotels, restaurants that use a lot of water, um, their bills will be going up percentage-wise the same, but a much more significant dollar amount. Okay, one last question. So then once we get all the final funding and all that, and say it's you know, going to cost less, then will our bill go down to the new rate if it goes down? So uh, council adopted a resolution to review the rates on an annual basis. Okay. That first review will be next year. Okay. Um, uh, it's been estimated with the S state revolving fund, the SRF funding, um, they'll go down about $5 a month. We just um, authorized contract with Barta Wells to do some of that uh, rate analysis. There's different interest rates than we first thought there. I think we were planning on a 1.7 SRF loan. It's down to 1.3 now. We received $5 million in grant funding. Um, we didn't assume any grant funding before, so we need to re-crunch re the numbers for those uh, rates and balance the amount of WIF EPA, WIFIA funding that we'll ask for versus SRF funding because WIFIA is a higher interest rate than SRF is. Yeah, I imagine electricity is the number one cost for the, for the plant out there. I think the number one cost is debt service. Yeah. Well, I mean, besides <laughs> debt service. But the, uh, are we looking at putting any wind turbines or any solar panels? or what's, what's We reserved about two acres for solar to offset the electrical use. I don't think we could build enough solar out here to 
uh, power the entire facility. Yeah, like electricity is definitely a, a, an expensive component of our annual O and M operating costs, but also also chemicals, sludge handling, and labor. Those are your your major uh, expenses. And uh, before we leave the site, though, one one important note as we look behind us here, and as Rob says, it, the plant itself will be built uh, to the north around that knoll. All the wastewater that when it comes in from the town as it's pumped in comes in at the farthest northerly part. So it's the furthest away from any public uh, you know, access or, or residential or uh, assisted living facility. So it is uh, quite a ways up the hill and as the process and the treatment uh, occurs and it moves closer to us, that's as the water gets purified and cleaner. Question about the engineering again, just coming for the, the wastewater that's coming from where the existing plant is over here. But what's just the elevation gain up Quintana there? Uh, 70, 70 feet, is it? I thought it was like 120. 120 feet, feet right around. Yeah. Uh, it's just yeah. over 100 feet, I believe. Yeah. Yep. It's hard to get downhill from where the um, existing facility is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see the Cold the ocean. <laughs> and then it, it hits a crest and then come, it'll flow downhill to the plant from sort of the crest of Quintana? Well, actually, when, when it gets pumped, it will be pressurized all the way. Yeah. Now, when we actually take the water, the purified water, back to the injection wells, yeah. we'll actually pump it over the crest of Quintana, and then from that point, it will yeah. essentially gravity back into the town. And by that time, it's all on the, the northeast side of one, right? The, the pipe, pipe or to the injection area? Uh, yeah. Well, it will follow Quintana all the way down uh, to the, to, to the power plant the again uh, across and then uh, then it will, it will head north along the, the bike path by the pg and &E and uh, power plant property. Ideally those injection wells will be on the uh, west side of the highway. Oh, okay. Back sort of where the plant is. Um, more like... Um, more north. North of there. Um, north of the high school? No, um, not north. Oh, south, yeah. south of there. Yeah. yeah. Um, across the creek from Lila Kaiser Park. Um, I don't know how many people know where this is, but you know where the harbor yard is at the yeah. end of the dirt embarcadero? If you drew a line from there uh, directly yeah. east to the freeway, kind of the wells would be along that line. And uh, what our hydrogeo consultant is doing right now is confirming how many wet injection wells that we'll need there. Um, they're thinking somewhere between two to four, but they need, we need to do some actual aquifer testing. So we need to pump um, either an existing um, power, old power plant well or drill a new well to um, uh, test that aquifer. How close will the pipes what kind of the effluent be to the pipes with the clean water? How close will they be to each other? Um, the, we'll meet the health department separation requirements. Okay. So the standard separation is 10 feet. Okay. We probably can't do 10 feet, so we'll have to use higher class pipe. Uh, higher class pipe. So it's pipe that will have um, fused. Um, connections so they'll be welded plastic connections either HDPE or fusible PVC so there's no uh, joints there so we're working with the health department to optimize that that distance but they're the ones the state division of drinking water will approve that um, probably no closer than I would say I don't think they're gonna be comfortable with anything closer than five feet and they'll be at different elevations. So, same, same trenches along Quintana? Um, we'll probably construct it in what is known as a lead lag <coughs> trench. So there might be a total trench width of uh, 12 feet, but you can't, there's not a 12 foot bucket that you can go through there. At least one that would get underneath that structure. Um, hmm. uh, that you could dig a, a trench at the same time. So you'll um, probably advance one section of the pipeline and then do on the other side of the trench do the other so you're not you're not digging a 12 foot wide hole in the ground 
all at one time. I think we're going to get back on the trolley now and head to Cloisters Park. Thank you everybody. We're here at uh, uh, Cloisters Park and we're going to be talking a little bit about the um, design work that we've commissioned to uh, look at rehabbing some of the landscaped areas out here. Um, as you all know, uh, this park was built with the subdivision in the uh, mid-90s um, and some of the landscaping areas are getting a bit long in the tooth. So Pam Newman, assistant engineer with the Public Works Department, is going to give us an overview of the project and probably point to a few areas where we're looking at doing rehab. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a map here. It, um, maybe you can zoom in. Yep. Um, so part of the project, uh, we sort of identified um, specifically six areas. And the first are the medians as you're coming into Cloisters. Uh, the second one is actually the parkways right off in front of that. Um, that would be in between the sidewalk and the bike path. Um, some of the other areas are the park um, planter areas. So to the, uh, I guess, my right over by the um, restrooms, there is, again, landscape that needs a little bit of refreshing. We have some plans um, to maybe create a little bit more hardscape, some more picnic tables in these areas. Um, another park um, planter area is on that side by where those stones are located at. Uh, and a little bit past the side of the playground. So all that area would be redesigned, um, again, creating a little bit more um, hardscape and more um, picnic tables and uh, mini plaza-like spaces. And then um, there's the play field. There's not a lot that we're gonna do with this area other than to just maybe improve its growth um, and uh, its look. And uh, the last lead's gonna be some of our neighborhood parkways. Um, so that's what we're proposing and we're looking at um, finishing up a, uh, basically a uh, study that was done by OASIS Landscape Architecture. And our next step is to finalize that and implement uh, starting construction documents to go into installation. Um, primarily focusing on the medians and the frontage of Coral Street. One additional area that we're looking at improving uh, with this study is that area that's um, uh, right along the freeway. You can see um, where they scraped uh, the soil from to basically raise the elevate the pad elevations of these homes to take them out of the floodplain. Um, you'll see some rilling along there. Um, as waters run down from the freeway and cause some erosion. So one of the ideas would be to strategically place some boulders in there to stop the rilling and then to plant those with some lower shrub materials. So um, one thing, we cannot screen the views from the scenic highway, so you have to be able to look. Uh, you can't, we couldn't put a row of trees along there. Um, the other thing is, Anything we do in um, uh, this park, in this development area, we have to maintain, there's a height restriction in here uh, put on the project by the Coastal Commission. So um, we tell the trees that they can't grow taller than 14 feet in, where they're adjacent to uh, one-story homes and 20-something feet where they're near uh, two-story homes. So um, we're looking at lower growing trees to replant in those areas. This, this project we presented to the Public Works Advisory Board uh, a couple of meetings ago. Um, we held a, a neighborhood meeting uh, out on site. Um, uh, we're organizing a meeting with our maintenance staff. Then we'll take all those comments back to deliver those back to OASIS to make the modifications to the the preliminary plans or the study. <clears throat> Any questions about the study or the park area in general? Um, 
in an earlier version there was sort of an event center that was being created is that still in the works or has that fortunately been mixed we are trying to find alternatives to what was originally uh, proposed the, that mini amphitheater. Right. Yeah, we got some feedback, and so we're going to work with Oasis to come up with alternatives to that. Good. Mm -hmm. Now, when I look out there, I see trees that are obviously more than 14 feet. And is there a plan to top those, or what's 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 going on with that? If there are trees outside of the view corridors, they can be taller than 14 feet, but within the view corridors. Um, unfortunately, many trees grow taller than 14 feet. I was joking a little bit when we <laughs> tell them they can't grow taller than that. But we have a difficult time finding actual tree species that are lower than 14 feet. Because topping is not really an accepted method of maintaining trees. Uh, if you you know talk to any of your ar arborists um, they would say topping is basically you're killing the tree. So uh, on that map so did you say what are you going to do is that just on those areas beyond the bushes there the grassy area between the bushes and the fence? No actually and, uh, in the in the, the where plants. the shrubs are okay. So that's going to stay the same. That's that's just an um, unmaintained open area. Okay. Yeah. And back here the same. Yeah. Back there is the same. Yeah. yeah. So it would be this area and this area. Just the area inside the bushes. Yeah. Basically the improved the improved landscaped areas. Mm -hmm. Well, you're currently seeing the growth, the landscape. Okay. Kirk, do you have anything you want to add about coasters? No, thank you. <laughs> Good. Okay. This playground was, was, is, was it going to be, it was just redone a few years ago, right? This, oh, we, we made some it. repairs here. <laughs> it's probably taking out a few features that were broken, but it needs some um, uh, uh, replacement also. <laughs> this is, this is um, one of those play structures. I think this is a designated toddler. Um, park, maybe, Mike? Is that what the uh, two to five year olds are? Yeah, and is it appropriate that this is a two to five year old? We, uh, we really can't answer that question. As a civil engineer, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> you going to attack it? Yeah. Right. Um, Uh, welcome to Tidelands Park. Um, we're near the uh, boat rents off area and Damaris Hansen, our environmental programs manager, is going to talk about the new uh, stormwater feature slash pocket park that we'll be developing here. Thank you, Damaris. Um, so the city received a grant recently uh, with the local government commission. Uh, they actually received the grant, we're a party to that grant. The grant is with the National Recreation and Parks Association. And that's how we <laughs> were able to build this little pocket park. So this park is actually going to be from this little island all the way back. And it'll encompass this whole area right here. So it's not very big, it's a tiny little pocket park. Um, but its main job is to take that water that comes from the boat wash there and it'll come into here. There's a storm drain right below here. It'll come into here into a bioretention area. We're standing in that bioretention area right now. It'll clean that water and then it'll send it back out to the bank. Um, a couple years ago, the city had a audit with the regional water board that holds our stormwater permit. And 
instead of renting off the boat, someone was washing a boat, so suds were going into the bay. So we got an illicit discharge um, violation for that. Um, so and it's just something that the city's been looking at for a while to kind of do something with that water. And it'll also clean some of the water from over here um, and clean up this area. The, as part of the grant, there's an education Check. component. Hold on a second. There's so much traffic noise behind you, I can't hear what you're saying. Um, can uh, can we shift over by the bus a little bit? I'm so sorry. I want to hear what you yeah. have to say, but I can't hear what you have to say. <laughs> it's like these trucks with diesels are like, that's all I hear. Excuse me for interrupting. So the, 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 the park will have a stormwater component, and then it'll have a seating area back here around the seating area. Um, walkways around it. Um, the park was designed with the, um, the education component of it is geared towards seniors um, and we met with the seniors group and kind of got some ideas of what they wanted at the park. Um, so we've incorporated those ideas and that's what you have in your hand It's kind of the final design of that. Um, some of their ideas were the bench that they wanted and the directions they wanted, the shape they wanted. Um, the height of the bench. They didn't want a bench that was lower. They wanted a little bit higher. It's easier to get up off the ground with that. Um, they wanted a zen feel. A bunch of, you know, a lot of comments that we tried to incorporate as much as that as we could into that design. The budget is only 57000 which sounds like a lot, but that goes pretty quick in a, in a design like this. Um, there's going to be some trees involved back here. Some cypress trees and um, some Hollywood junipers that will go along with it. And then all inside the basin has particular plants in there to help treat and the soils treat to, to clean up that water before it goes back out to the bay. Um, I can answer any questions you guys have to. The uh, water that goes into the retention, how long does it stay there and how does it make its way back to the bay? So the pipe, there's a pipe that goes to that storm drain there, it'll be extended this way. The water will come in from the gutter line, it'll be redirected into the basin it'll soak through the basin, go into that pipe, like basically like a French drain type system, go into that, and then it'll connect back out to go back out where it originally went. We're just redirecting it this way for a little bit, and then back out. So that does the retention on create some sort of filtering? Yeah, the, the plants that are in it and the soil media that's in it, um, it takes a lot of the pollutants out of it. Um, so it's specially designed just for that. But it's not an open water pond. It's, yeah. uh, it's uh, we're using the plant material and soil and the root structure to um, treat the um, stormwater. So there'll be a little bit of like Look like a slew. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not a lot. And then, uh, yeah, it goes away quickly. Ready, would you see the, like if somebody had suds on their boat, would you see <laughs> it coming into the, the bioretention uh, habitat? Yeah. You would see it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when, when we were here, we were literally walking down the street, and you could see the suds going down the, the yeah. street, and then we walked right across the street, and there was all of it. Yeah. So, yeah. It would come in here and at least get some treatment before it went back out. What kind of plants uh, um, live on that kind of thing? They're different types of grasses. Grass. Um, so it's similar to that picture there. Yeah. Um, there's, and the basin of it is one type of grass, and the top has a little bit different type of grass, a little higher higher grass. Um, but it's just different types of jungle grass. grass so it's, yeah. yeah, pretty hardy grasses. Yeah. So where do they hose the boats off right there? Mm -hmm. Where does that water go? It goes into that, that valley gutter right there and goes into that storm drain and goes straight out to the bay. Oh, does it? So it's not going to be involved? In it will be. It'll be redirected into this basin. Oh, okay. And then go into the So basin. it's got diesel oil and various other mm -hmm. chemicals yeah, in there. Yeah, I mean, imagine. it's, yeah, it's, yeah. So that's why we're trying to give it some treatment before we Before it goes over. back into the bay and makes that funny looking oil sign <laughs> in the water. On the, uh, <laughs> boat wash down. Um, what's the water that they use? Is that seawater or what? City potable water. City potable water. And it's a coin operated uh, rinse off station. So the one good thing is that this will get water almost year round and it will get it during the summer because it's highly used in the summer time too. So, um, it'll, it'll keep the plants and everything alive in there too. They're, they're, they can live through you know drought and water and everything but it's, it's just, it'll get year round water. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 
Is there a sizing requirement, or did you just take the space? No, the, um, Rick Engineering did all the engineering and, and design of it. Oh. Um, so the basin will be about 700 square feet, mm -hmm. and that was designed to capture that water and a little bit of this watershed this way, yeah. and to be able to treat that water right. there. So yeah, they, they sized it all for that. So it was thought out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. you live with the land you got. Yeah. You know. Well, we were kind of stuck with a small area, but it, it worked out for me. And we just got those final designs back from Rick Engineering um, just a couple of days ago, actually. Um, so we'll start to put together that bid package and then get that out. And it shouldn't take too much longer, I hope. <laughs> Hope you have something left of your 50 cents. Yeah, it's going to be tight. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. So, this project should make the bay cleaner, shouldn't yes. it? It's pretty clean yeah, now. Well, see down the bays. Yeah. Good. Any other questions? What's the next stop? Um, back to the office and we'll continue the meetings there or we could conclude them here and just take the ride back why don't we do that oh, uh, 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 mr. chair if you'd uh, uh, serve, uh, <laughs> we'll adjourn the meeting of the public works advisory board to our regular August uh, meeting and uh, recreation <laughs> yeah uh, so this concludes our meeting